Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is a Windows Phone 8 handset. This is the Nokia Lumia 925. Now, a lot of people have asked me to review a Windows Phone 8 device, not just because it's Windows Phone 8, but because it's coming from the perspective of someone like me who uses a lot of Google services. I use Google Tasks, Google Calendar, Gmail, a lot of things like that that make it really, really good for Android. Now, Windows Phone 8 has come out and it's been around for a while, but I've never really tried it out because I've never really seen all the customization and all the same functionality that I see in Android and anything about Windows Phone 8. But I'm gonna give it a shot. I give it its full fair shot. And I think it's important to note uh, where I'm coming from and where I see this device from. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the Nokia Lumia 925. So first of all, on the outside, this thing has pretty great hardware. It's up there in the top five best built smartphones you can get right now alongside the HTC One near the top. Seriously, it has zero give, zero flex, an all aluminum ring around the outside, Gorilla Glass 2 on the front, and technically a plastic back, but a very rigid, solid build. It's also rounded on every single corner and the design's pretty nice and it has a slimming matte finish on that back. So basically it's like a Lumia 920 on a diet. It's slimmer and thinner and more pocketable than its cousin in every single way. And it ends up making a beautifully sculpted device. Now in the specs department, it's interesting because this is supposed to be a flagship device, right? Well, it doesn't have what we would think of as flagship specs. It has a 4.5 inch 1280 by 768 AMOLED display a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 processor, a one gigabyte of RAM, a, a 2000 milliamp hour battery. It's kind of reminiscent of the Galaxy S2, to be honest. But even at its 1280 by 768 resolution and all that, it's, it's fine because Windows Phone and all of its apps, yes, all of them, uh, trust me, they'll work just fine with what seems like mid-range specs for a phone in 2013. So that AMOLED display is actually pretty awesome. It's 1280 by 768, but it comes in at 334 PPI. So it's a very high pixel density. And of course, since so much of Windows Phone is based around this color on black look, you get a good look at those insane contrast ratios and deep blacks you get from the display being AMOLED. It's also very readable outdoors too. Another thing about the design choice is that all of the buttons on this phone are on the right hand side. So the volume rocker, the power button, and that dedicated camera switch are all on the right hand side. And I think that actually makes for a pretty compact, easy to use device. You only really have to use it in one single hand where your thumb is, you can access every single one of these buttons. And I think it's also notable that there's that camera key because it actually makes it feel like a really solid shooter. Even if you're not taking the best pictures in the world with this pure view shooter on the back and the dedicated half press and full press to focus and take a picture, this camera button is, is really solid. And I think it adds to that feel. It brings us back to like the 2010 LG Voyager style phones where you always got that dedicated camera button. And speaking of the camera, the back of this device is basically dedicated to exactly that. The decently loud speaker on the bottom and the camera. It's an 8.7 megapixel peer view camera. Now I can't get into exactly how the proprietary peer view technology works behind the scenes when you're taking shots, but it is a pretty big deal to what Nokia is doing with this camera. But at the end of the day, this phone is a great walk around camera. It takes sharp shots with nice contrast, solid amount of detail, pretty good low light performance, I would say. And it also happens to have really good stabilization, I noticed, especially when zooming in and when taking video. But at the end of the day, it's about on par with any other high-end 8 megapixel camera, which makes sense. So the hardware is essentially a mid-range inside with beautifully sculpted externals. So how about that software? Well, it's all right, <laughs> it's all right. The Lumia 925, like we said, is running Windows Phone 8, the latest version. And the operating system itself is pretty unique in a lot of ways that a lot of people will like but it's also missing a lot of things that a lot of people have gotten used to having in other OSs, namely the apps, but we'll get to that in a second. So it's pretty minimalist style operating system overall, as you can see, pretty easy on the eyes, very text heavy, and overall pretty easy to get used to. Using it goes exactly as you'd expect. Everything does what you expect it to. So the ease of use factor is pretty great, and I could probably give this to my parents and they'd figure out most of it in about two seconds flat. And in terms of style, it's actually something I could see myself getting used to if I signed a contract and had this phone for a few years. Of course, if you're not into red and black like I am, you can always change the overall theme of the entire OS with just a pair of flipped switches, which is pretty convenient. But that's as much customization as you're gonna get with these phones. So if you like making the device your own, like you really like making changes on any number of Android phones out there, you'll be a bit disappointed with the lack of UI changes you actually can make, especially with your home screen in Windows Phone 8. In the home screen, basically, besides changing the colors, you can only change the size and positioning 
of your tiles and what you decide to pin on your home screen. That's about it. So some of the information you can see before you tap it, these are called live tiles and they give a bit of a dynamic look, but that's it. You can't change anything else about the home screen. And next to that, you get your list of apps. So yeah, I'm usually a person who likes tinkering around with the look of the Android you know, OS and home screens and things like that. I got bored pretty easily in Windows Phone, I hate to say that. But as I was tinkering around in Windows Phone, I found that uh, this, this device had a particularly impressive battery life. I mentioned before it only has a 2000 milliamp hour battery, but thanks to that AMOLED display and the deep blacks made constant appearances in Windows Phone 8, I'm able to get some pretty impressive battery life. I would go to say all day battery uh, and then a little bit more on only 2000 milliamp hours. And that's because Windows Phone is really, really effective and efficient and uh, the standby times were outstanding. Standby times are great. I could put it to sleep with 100% battery and wake it up the next morning and it would have 97% battery, which was really, really cool. But you'd expect a phone with such great battery life to sacrifice a bit on performance. Again, Windows Phone takes a lot at the helm here and performance actually was usually pretty good. It, it was very responsive, especially with the slick Gorilla Glass 2 on the front, but this was a little bit dependent on the app. Uh, but that's the thing, the apps. There are very, very few apps in the Windows Phone marketplace. And in fact, I would go to say uh, that this is, this is the killer right now. This is what kills Windows Phone for me. I could use Windows Phone for a while if I had to sign a contract, but the app support just isn't there. There are so many apps that I would use on iOS and Android that I just can't find. In fact, if you take a look through the Windows Phone marketplace, you'll see uh, in the, the list of the top apps in the entire marketplace, it very quickly diminishes from you know Angry Birds and the highest end developers straight down to like flashlights and you know mini games and just terrible, terrible apps in the top in the whole entire app store. So I mean, this is not a great app store at all. Again, the interface is fine, it looks fine, it functions perfectly, but it's just missing so many of the apps we're used to having. So overall, it turns out that the Lumia 925 is a really nice Windows Phone flagship uh, and definitely worthy and deserving of the Lumia tag. Now, if this phone was running Android, I'd probably carry it in a heartbeat. I am such a big fan of the outside of this phone and the design and the aesthetics and the build quality, just like the HTC One, the Nokia, uh, all the Nokia phones have in general been really well built, but this one's a lot thinner and a lot more rounded and a lot more pocket friendly than the previous Lumia bricks. So I really like the Nokia Lumia 925's design and build and aesthetics and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of decisions you have to make if you want to decide to carry this phone or not that I've listed out in the review and the choice is yours. Would you carry this phone? I think I'd, I think I'd be down. Either way, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up below. That definitely helps out. And the comment section is always open below. You'll see me answering a ton of comments below there uh, for any of the thoughts you guys might have to leave about the Lumia 925. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.